so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 pm to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> This bulletin, People's Democratic Party leader Felix Anthony condemns Lysenian Garcia's comments on the Quran. Cardiac facilities herald in a new era for CWM Hospital. And Fijian golfer Vijay Singh returns home for Fiji International. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The People's Democratic Party has condemned comments made by the Social Democratic Liberal Party leader Rote Mumukepa and Lysini Ngarase about the Itauke being more equal than others in Fiji. Sodelpa says as indigenous people, the Itauke should have special privileges, claiming they were the first to arrive in Fiji and that no one can be equal to them. Chanel Sivan reports. We are sharing this country with uh, everyone because this all belongs to us. But when it comes to indigenous rights, that is different. It's divisive comments like this that People's Democratic Party says it'll never support. No, I'm not supporting that at all. I'm saying everyone should be equal. Before the law, everyone should be equal. But I also acknowledge that indigenous people uh, need special recognition. And that is something that the PDP uh, uh, will comply with. Anthony says although his party respects indigenous rights, according to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Indigenous People, he says everyone in Fiji should be treated equally. You have to, you have to give special consideration for any indigenous people anywhere in the world. Because there are only 500,000. Yeah, there are only 500,000 of us. So if you, if you don't help look after us, then we are lost. Eh? So we are asking everybody to help look after us as we are looking after them. Laysen Yangarase has been um, making rumors on the number 135 in the ballot, uh, on the ballot paper saying it was taken from the Quran. Your comments on that, sir? I think that's nonsense. That's all it deserves. <laughs> With Felix Anthony now joining Fiji Labour Party's Mahendra Chaudhary and the National Federation Party's Biman Prasad in condemning such divisive and racist comments made by Sodalpa, it may just make it even harder for any of these parties to join forces with Sodalpa for a possible joint collision post-elections. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Trade unionist Daniel Orai has announced his resignation as the General Secretary of the National Union of Hospitality, Catering and Tourism Industries employees to be eligible to contest the elections. However, Orai has stated he will continue in his role as the President of the Fiji Trade Union Congress. The political party's decree states that any trade union official who wants to run for elections must resign from office. Orai will contest the elections under the People's Democratic Party banner. He becomes the fourth trade unionist to join the race for Fiji's new parliament. My position in the Fiji Trade Union Congress is a non-paying position. But if it's even required for me to, to step down from the non-paying position, the decree requires that, then I will abide by that. Also, Sodelpa is tonight preparing to lodge a complaint with the Media Industry Development Authority about what it calls misreporting by the Fiji Sun. It was this story in last Thursday's Fiji Sun which has irked Sodelpa. The article quotes Sodelpa Media Liaison Officer Sainiana Ranronro as saying that Lysini Ngarase had been told by the party hierarchy to tone down his comments after his controversial statements. The leader denies this. There were two witnesses right there with uh, Ms. Randonro, 
who stated uh, to us that what was there in the Fiji sun was not what they heard. So if two people who were there have stated, I mean they just happened to, to be standing right with her, mm. have stated that that's not what Mr. Randondo said mm. in the, um, uh, to the Fiji sun. Mm. Fiji Sun says it stands by its story and Ronronro did make the comment. Still to come on FBC News, Lomai Vuna landowners want overdue lease payments. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. Hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Louise with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Colonial War Memorial Hospital in Suva now has state-of-the-art catheterization lab and operating theatre. Vusita Kotewasawasa reports the new facilities enable local doctors to carry out procedures which previously required Fijians to seek treatment overseas. The CWM hospital now has a new cath lab and operating theatre where complex cardiac surgeries can be conducted by local doctors. With these new facilities, it's well on its way to becoming a regional hub for complex medical procedures. The quality of those procedures is about to be taken to another level with this new state-of-the-art facility that is among the most advanced ever built in Fiji. We now have the ability to perform the most complicated surgical procedures, and especially some heart surgery here in Suva, rather than sending patients overseas. CWM is about to become a regional hub in which highly trained surgeons and physicians both transform and save the lives of hundreds of Pacific Islanders. Out of the thousand operations conducted at hospitals in Fiji, the CWM hospital is responsible for 6,000 surgical procedures every year. Banimarama says the government is committed to improving health care in Fiji and has provided 696 new doctors around the country supported by 1,500 nurses. Working together, we are putting behind us the days in which some of our health workers displayed an attitude of casual indifference to ordinary Fijians in the hour of need. We have been determined to put the care back into health care. And that means working with the public health employees to develop a new spirit in our hospitals and clinics of pride in our mission and of always putting the patients first. The Indian government needed $200,000 for the new facilities at the hospital. Vosita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. A 119-year-old heritage site in the heart of the capital has received a much-needed facelift. $50,000 has been spent on restoring the former Fiji Visitors Bureau. Ellen Stahls reports. The Victorian-themed building is used by the Government Services Centre. In 2009, this 100-year-old site was handed over to the Public Service Commission and declared a National Heritage Class A building. National Trust of Fiji Vice Chair Robin Yarrow says heritage sites should never be taken for granted. It has been demonstrated elsewhere in the world that investments in restoring and better managing heritage structures can have a direct benefit in various ways, one of which is increased tourism. This in turn will have wider economic dividends, in particular in terms of job creation. These jobs can be widely dispersed through restaurants, hotels, transport, handicraft, manufacture and sale, and also in tour guide. 
The paint job has restored the building to its original color scheme from 1895, when it was the customs house and residence for the harbor master. The national heritage and culture of our country uh, illustrates uh, the rich history which Fiji has had. It, it also instills a, a, a purpose and, and civic pride in, in all of us. Um, this will be one of many other restoration projects carried out by PSC. We are teaming up with the National Trust of Fiji uh, and Department of uh, Heritage of the Ministry of Education uh, to work on other similar buildings uh, uh, here in Suva. The renovations will be used to market Suva and bring more tourists to the capital. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Lomai Vuna landowners in Naitasiri are seeking answers from the government on lease payments owing since 2008. Cabinet had approved a half million dollar payout which still hasn't been processed. Vusita Kotewasawasa finds out what happened. The Lomai Vuna agricultural scheme was established in 1963 with farmers brought in to cultivate 2,000 acres of land for banana exports. At the end of the scheme in 2008, landowners had not been paid their full lease money. For eight years until now, we have yet to receive any money. I have always come to inquire about it at the Prime Minister's office and his staff have copies of this letter. Nothing has come out of it from then until now. The Agriculture Ministry has dug up files and found that there is $460,000 to be paid out, but this goes to landowners and to farmers under the scheme. Each farmer slash landowner is supposed to get $4,000. Managed to pay only uh, 32 farmers altogether. And uh, 83 farmers uh, were left to be paid. But uh, we encountered uh, some problems in, 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 the, in the processing of the payments. Yeah? Although money was allocated in 2008, payment couldn't be made because recipients in Lomaivuna didn't have the essentials like birth certificates, Volani Kaumbula records, and lease titles. Sets of criteria for farmers to, to follow uh, in order to access this fund. Some were submitted late. Since the payments was done in late uh, 2009, and also Ministry of Finance, you know, the funds, uh, we have to utilize, you know, government agencies, they have to utilize the funds before December 2018. And then uh, that's why most of these 83 farmers are uh, left out. The Agriculture Ministry has the files of the 83 farmers dating back to 2010 and asked the government to facilitate the payout in 2015. Vasita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. Jamie joins us now with sports and how are things looking for the inaugural Fiji International in Natondola? Very positive, Jackie. The players are happy to be here and part of the championship. Well, supporters are also thrilled to have Fiji's very own Vijay Singh competing on home soil again, something I'm sure all Fijians are proud of. I'm sure it will be Jackie. Well, Charlene Daudakavaka was at Natandola today, and he'll have more for us after the break. Stay with us. Hello guys, I am DJ Krish Neel. You can listen to us in Mirchi FM Raftar, Monday to Friday, from 3 to 7 o'clock in the morning. Mirchi FM, it's hot! तो आप हमें बता सकते हैं कि जो बलात्कार हो रही हैं इसको कैसे रोक सकते हैं आप हमें अपनी राय दे सकते हैं श्रोताओं की जो आग लग रही है दोष किसका है किसको हम दोष दे सकते हैं इस पर हम किसको दोष दें ड्राइवर्स को या फिर पुलिस को नमस्ते फीजी देश की धड़कन रेडियो फीजी टू पर मैं मोहिनी हमारे साथ में शामिल हो जाइएगा दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में हर सोमवार ऐसी शुक्रवार तक रात सात ऐसी आठ बजे तक दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में Welcome back. The Fiji International Golf Tournament is all set to get underway tomorrow morning at the Natandola Bay Championship course in Singatoka. Players made a final round of the greens today and FBC Sports got a close-up look 
two of the most prolific players in the tournament, Vijay Singh and Nick Price. Here's Salen Dadakadako with more. Golfers at the Natandola Bay Championship course made the most of the fine yet windy conditions to get the game up to par before tee-off tomorrow. The pristine 18-hole course could not have been in better shape for Fiji's first ever biggest international tournament. Only days after completing the US PGA Championship, renowned Fijian golfer Vijay Sin was back on the green on the course he designed and anticipates the locals to come out in numbers and cheer him on. All of us over here that really know me and, and wants to see me play, I hope they all come out here and, and watch me play. Uh, it's not too many years left for me to play at the level that you know, I can play and, and win the golf tournaments. Uh, I am 51 years old and I guess I got another couple of years in the US too before I, you know, in terms of the repping of the senior tour events, but uh, hopefully they all come out. Three-time major champion Nick Price of Zimbabwe is still on the road to recovery from an elbow injury, but is happy to take in the sights over the course of the competition. It's really one of the prettiest places I've been to. Uh, I'm a huge fisherman, so any water that looks like that sort of like attracts me. Um, I go to the Bahamas a lot, and the only other place I've seen water that's pretty is in the Bahamas. So, um, But, you know, it's a, it's a place that I've always wanted to come to, and obviously being friends with DJ as long as I have, uh, you know, I often spoke about it. Price says he will be looking to get a much closer look of the country before he leaves next week. It's really nice to be able to come here and I hope I can come back maybe without my golf clubs one day and enjoy, you know, the, it's the fishing and, and enjoy the other parts of, of the island because um, when you play golf it's really nice to be, but you only get to see the golf course and the hotel and that's it. So I may sneak off, uh, I think I play early on Friday, so maybe Friday afternoon I'll try and sneak off and go and do something and have a better look at the island. This golf course was made specifically to host international tournaments. Over the next four days, 120 golfers will compete for the inaugural title as well as the one million US dollar prize money. Tsalen Dovakavak, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji International was officially opened by Prime Minister of Orenge Mbainimarama last night. In his welcoming address to the 120 golfers, Mbainimarama said it was a proud moment for Fiji to host a tournament of this magnitude. He added that although Fiji has long offered a selection of beautiful courses, both to visitors and local golfers, the country has never truly capitalized on the sports potential here. Experience tells us that golf tends to attract visitors who come not only to play at spectacular golf uh, courses like the one here in Natandola, but also to enjoy the many beautiful resorts, activities and attractions that can be found in our country. While the growth of golf tourism depends in part on the development of uh, more highly quality golfing facilities, it also depends on marketing the ones we already offer to golfers and their families around the world. To this end, we believe that the Fiji International will instantly establish Fiji as a top golfing destination in the region and further field. A reminder that you can watch the Fiji International live on FBC TV, 12 p.m. daily from tomorrow until Sunday. The Fiji Secondary School Hockey Championships, which get underway tomorrow, have received a major boost. Goodman Fielder has come on board with $9,500 to sponsor the tournament. Close to 800 students from 17 schools will be taking part in the competition, and organizers are grateful with the support from its sponsors. Our organization is a non-profit organization and you have demonstrated uh, the love that you have for our children and uh, we want to thank you that uh, because of your sponsorship we have been able to uh, uh, carry out our tournament successfully this year. The championship ends on Saturday. The Fiji Rugby Union believes the Kachi Ruggers are the heartbeat of the sport in the country. The union says Galaxy Kachi Rugby is a vital component in FRU's development plan to mold their future rugby players for national duty. Rugby House says there are many Fijian players overseas who are testimony to development through Kachi Rugby. Kachi Rugby has achieved its mission in developing and exposing the raw talents of our children, where some of them are now playing professional rugby around the world. I think you uh, will have uh, seen uh, the young Mr. Savo on TV recently and in the, in the media who is now doing very well and is poised to be a, uh, a phenomenon, I hope, in uh, international rugby in England. 
Just one more match remains before either Tailebu Naita Siri or Savu Savu makes the cut into Fiji football's Super Premier Division next season. Tailebu Naita Siri holds the upper hand currently, having won the first game 3-2 and will only need a draw to qualify. Meanwhile, Fiji football also has its work cut out as they gear up for busy three weeks ahead. Interesting has more. This was the scenario in the first match where Tailevu Naita Siri got a crucial away win, putting one foot into the super premier grade. Yes, sir. Now Tailevu Naita Siri going into the second leg of the playoffs with upper hand. Uh, they just need a draw to, call it, to get promoted to super premier division from next year. Fiji football is also bracing for the return game, which will give them a new team to join the top flight. Performance has really improved uh, this year since uh, teams uh, knew that uh, they had the uh, opportunity to qualify for uh, prom to be promoted to Super Premier Division directly. Coupled with that, Fiji FA is also working on finishing touches for the Ink Battle of the Giants, where an under 16 competition will also be played. In the tournament, we have under 16 uh, teams from the West. Uh, coming up. Uh, this is more of a selection. Uh, we are uh, participating in the Oceania under 17 next year and uh, the under 16 boys that will be playing, will, uh, they will, our officials will be there to select the players. A lot of football lies ahead. There will be a new team in the Super Premier while the BOG will also bring with it the best of football action. Interesting FBC Sports. And that was your sports for tonight. Good evening. Inc. Mobile Fiji Limited has launched a range of 4G mobile phones as it hopes to provide its customers with high-speed applications and services. Chief Executive Paul O'Neill says the company will now be able to offer a remarkable experience of fast internet at the most affordable prices to their customers. O'Neill was not present at the launch in Suva yesterday. However, the general manager says the first phase of the rollout will have 4G services available in most parts of Suva, Lami, Nausori and some parts of Nasinu and Nandi. The second phase will see customers in other areas having access to the 4G technology. The company leases network space from Vodafone Fiji and has about 250,000 customers. We've reached that time. It's weather with the lovely Trish. Thanks, Jackie. Today, Suva saw some heavy rain in the morning and occasional showers throughout the rest of the day. Savu Savu had scattered cloudiness all day, while Nandi, Lotoka, Ba, and Lambasa had clear weather in the morning and cloudy skies towards the afternoon. Temperatures today, Suva saw 27. Well, 28, Lotoka 30, Ba 32, Savu Savu 27, and Lambasa 32. Coolest tonight will be Ba, Lotoka, Nandi, and Singatoka. They'll drop down to 20. Thursday's forecast, Suva and Savu Savu can expect cloudy periods and scattered showers throughout the day. Nandi, Lotoka, and Ba, and Lambasa should have fine weather in the morning. But towards the afternoon, cloudy skies pretty much like today. This picture of Nathovi Wharf sent in by Rajinesh Kumar. If you have pictures that you would like to share with us, I'll send them into citizens eyes at fbc.com.fj. Take this at Nathovi Wharf. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Recapping our top stories tonight. People's Democratic Party leader Felix Anthony condemns Lysenian Garuse's comments on the Quran. Cardiac facilities herald in a new era for CWM Hospital and Fijian golfer Vijay Singh returns home for Fiji International. Time now for our Fijian Speaks segment. Not racist. There's no racism in it. A very stable and a prosperous government. I would like a better Fiji for our children, our future. The Fiji I want for um, after the elections is a Fiji that has unity, the Fiji that can bring also um, bring the people together as one. Um, something that will uplift every individual, especially the poor, especially those who are in need. 
Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You can also find us on YouTube, FBC TV 2011 and on Instagram, FBC TV. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, text subspace FBC to 777. That's all from us tonight. Join the team and I at the same time again tomorrow. Till then, good evening. Ini baru orang tu main radio Fiji One, tetapi kalau tu nang rakyat nang orang ni kau, anda tak kini orang ni nang dua, tetapi main orang tengah orang go, mereka pun nang ruai nang kubing kerap yang sini lebih ni kau. Ni sahun gula binaka, ayah orang yang kamera langit, nama kau orang lebih mata kau main nang dua kini nang ruai nang sini lebih main nang moni tiki nang orang buka nang radio Fiji One, nang dua main binti orang gani biar ni ada. VG, you're the afternoon snap with Josie, and of course I've got more good hits lined up for you, so stay tuned for that. But right now, check this song out, man. It's Golden City coming out to do with Amity K, ready for your love, right here on Today FM. I'm ready for the start of something new. I'm ready for your love. I'm ready for your love. I'm Josie, your host on the afternoon snap every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. I'm ready for my hands to touch the sky. 